Morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning Five here on Wednesday, December 9th, 2015. I am Dave Biddle. I am happy to be joined by Bucknuts columnist Brandon Castell. Be cast with uh, Chris Ash, unfortunately, moving on to Rutgers as head coach. I'm actually happy for Coach Ash, but unfortunately for Ohio State. With him moving on, who do you want to see as Coach Ash's replacement at Ohio State? You know, hey, Dave, that's a great question. Um, you know, first let me say I, I agree with you. I'm happy for Chris Ash. I'm happy for any guy that gets a, an opportunity to be a head coach in a major program. You know, I've, I've always said Rutgers is a, that a program that I think you can win with for a short amount of time. I, I think it'll be hard to sustain success long term. Uh, but there's plenty of talent in the New Jersey area. Um, you know, it usually gets picked off by Ohio State and Michigan and uh, Penn State, you know, when they're on, on – uh, kind of the, the peaking point of their program. But, you know, you look at uh, some of the pro, some of the kids that Ohio State's brought in, when you look at Malcolm Jenkins and Eli Apple and, um, you know, obviously Jabril Peppers up at Michigan. So there's a lot of talent up there. Um, so I think that'll be a good thing for Chris Ash. I don't know how long you can sustain success at Rutgers playing against the rest of the Big Ten. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what he can do. He did a tremendous job at Ohio State. Um, you know, it's, it's almost uh, – a forgotten thing around Ohio State, you know, how bad the defense was on the back end before Chris Ash got there. Um, Go back to three years ago, and, you know, I remember saying that the one thing I thought that was preventing them from competing for national championships was their their defense and uh, really their back seven. It just wasn't good enough to play at that level. Chris Ash came in and did a great job, so I'm not surprised to see him get a head coaching job. Um, You know, a lot of names out there right now, I think – Dave Aranda, the, guy, the, the defensive coordinator at Wisconsin, where Chris Ash was originally, is a guy that I've seen uh, a lot of people talk about uh, as being interested and, um, you know, that, that would create a lot of buzz. Uh, another guy that, that – uh, a name that you're going to hear a lot is probably Mel Tucker, uh, you know, a guy who was a former Ohio State assistant. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that's been, been coaching the secondary for Nick Saban uh, this season – It'll be interesting to see what happens, how much of a, a bump up in, in title he would get if he'd look at coming back to Ohio State. He was a guy that people had looked at last time when Ohio State was looking for a secondary coach. Um, so, you know, I think uh, you know, I'll be interested to see. There's some other names that are out there. Paul Rhodes, Chuck Heater is a guy that, uh, that has coached for Urban Meyer before and, and is a defensive coordinator at Marshall. I think he'd be a, a good fit, although he's an, a, Michi- a Michigan alumnus. So I don't know if, uh, you know, that would kind of work very well. Um, you know, but he, he coached under Earl Bruce in, in the 80s. And so, you know, there, there's a lot of names out there right now. My guess is it, 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 that we'll see, uh, you know, you look back at where a guy like Tom Herman came from, you know, or even Chris Ash. It was kind of everybody made their list and everybody, you know, drew the lines and the connections to Urban Meyer. And then uh, all of a sudden, you know, somebody came out of nowhere. So to me, this is the most significant departure they've had other than Tom Herman during Urban's uh, tenure at Ohio State, so it'll be interesting to see what uh, you know what they do at that spot. You make a very good point that these things tend to come out of nowhere, and, and no better examples, as you mentioned, than Tom Herman and Chris Ash. As everybody opined when Urban Meyer was hired, who might be his offensive coordinator, there were many names thrown out there. Not one was Tom Herman, and then when Everett Withers was either on his own, left for James Madison, or was asked to leave. Um, or told to look around for other jobs when he left and people were questioning who might be the next hire. Nobody mentioned Chris Ash. So these things do come, tend to come out of nowhere. We'll see what happens. But uh, speaking of Ohio State assistant coaches, B-Cast, will Tim Beck retain his job? And I know that's – I'm asking you to go out on a limb here. Buckeye fans want to know this, though. I, I, you know, Talking to Buckeye fans, reading about it on message boards, people want to know, is Tim Beck coming back next year? We don't know right now, but – Read the tea leaves for me. What's your vibe here? Do you think Tim Beck will be back on the staff next year? You know, it's an interesting question because when when I was on uh, the show with you a few weeks back, I think you asked me that same question, and, you know, my thought was, yes, I thought he would be back at the time. I just didn't see, you know, making such a drastic uh, change because his first year in the program, it, it typically takes a little while 
to get situated, to get accustomed to Urban Meyer's way of doing things, to really earn Urban's trust when it comes to play calling. And think about the fact that he really wasn't um, – he really wasn't brought in to be the play caller. He was brought in to, to replace Tom Herman as the quarterback's coach. That, to me, is an area I'm concerned with. I didn't see a lot of progress in the quarterbacks this year. Um, Urban historically hasn't really cut guys loose like that, but obviously you know, when there's not a good fit, we saw Everett Withers, you know, again, what, what circumstances he left under Urban. He didn't fire him by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, was maybe encouraged to take another head coaching job. So, um to me, I, I do think now, though, that I've seen and heard some, some more uh, information, it, I do think there's some concern from Urban Meyer just about the fit and having a real true quarterbacks coach, uh, a guy who's had some success coaching quarterbacks and calling plays. Um, you know, moving Ed Warner up to the box, I think that was a big switch that, you know, to me, if that's their move going forward, that'll be the big question. Does Urban Meyer want Ed Warner on the field or not? Because if Ed Warner's going to be in the box, then I think Tim Beck will have another season at Ohio State to get accustomed and let Ed Warner go up to the box, call plays, and let them get on the same page. If he thinks his offensive line coach needs to be on the field and the guy in the box is going to be calling plays, that's when I think you're probably going to see a change at, at offensive coordinator, or at least a play caller position. Brandon, there's a lot of buzz about Mike Loxley perhaps coming to Ohio State. Um, excellent recruiter. We've talked about him personally just uh, through Bucknuts, uh, you know, conference calls and emails and whatnot. You know, and, and people will say, oh, Mike Loxley, you know, he was a failure as a uh, head coach. That's fine. You can be an excellent offensive or defensive coordinator and not be a good head coach. Uh, great recruiter. Uh, I think this is in play. I want to get your thoughts on this. Do you think that there's a chance that Urban Meyer could pull the plug on Tim Beck and hire Mike Loxley? Yeah, that's a name that I actually had heard uh, from a pretty strong source that uh, there was some interest there, possibly even some communication between uh, Urban Meyer and, and Mike Loxley's camp. I think the tea leaves, uh, you know, there was writing on the wall with uh, Maryland and just all the upheaval there at, at Maryland. And, um, you know, I think that, that they wanted to go a different direction and kind of a departure from that entire uh, situation that they had there. And obviously they found their guy in D.J. Durkin, a former uh, – Urban assistant and Harbaugh assistant. So, um, you know, I think now that uh, Loxley probably is going to be on the open market, I think that's absolutely a name that they're going to look at. Um, you know, again, the people go back to his his disastrous uh, stint at New Mexico, two and twenty six. But we've seen a lot of guys who really didn't pan out in their first head coaching uh, situation, or even maybe they they weren't meant to be a head coach. They were really specialized as a as a coordinator. Um, you know, and I think that. Uh, Loxie's a guy who's, who's done some good stuff. Go back to those uh, mid to late 2000 Illinois teams. He was the offensive coordinator for Zook on uh, the teams that had Juice Williams and Richard Mendenhall, the team that beat Ohio State in the horseshoe. Um, you know, and he was a guy that uh, that Urban wanted to keep at Florida when he when he took the job from from Rod Zook and tried to keep him in, at at Florida, tried to keep Loxley with the Gators, and he ended up going with Zook to Illinois. So obviously, there's some interest there. And then the guy is just a tremendous recruiter. It all it would almost be unfair. Uh, to have him and Larry Johnson on the same staff when it comes to recruiting the the D.C., Virginia, Maryland area. Um, you know, obviously he's a guy that, that was able to keep uh, uh, Stephon Diggs in, in state and, and kept him uh, going to Maryland instead of Ohio State or Florida. Um, you know, and he's just a guy that's done a tremendous job recruiting everywhere he's gone. Illinois he did a great job getting Aurelius Ben out of that area. So, uh, you know, he definitely fits the bill of what Urban Meyer would look like, and, uh, you know, I, I think there's some there might be some fire to that smoke. Speaking of recruiting in the DMV, Dwayne Haskins, we thought that ship had sailed. Number seven pro-style quarterback in the country, number 67 overall player in the country in the 2016 class. A very high four-star prospect, according to the 24-7 Sports Composite. Committed to Maryland, but a big reason he committed to Maryland, b as we both know, is because of Mike Loxley. Especially if Mike Loxley comes to Ohio State, this is very much in play for the Buckeyes. Dwayne Haskins taking his official visit to Ohio State this weekend. Tristan Wallace, I think Ohio State's, they would take him as an athlete. I think they think he's not a quarterback anymore. And I think even he feels like he's not a quarterback in the college ranks anymore. Maybe more of a wide receiver, H-back type. Um, if the Buckeyes get Mike Loxley, I think Dwayne Haskins could be in tow. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, right now, the fact that he's taken an official visit, I think, is huge late in the process like this. If Loxley were staying at Maryland, you know, I'd think this was a pretty big long shot. You know, I'd go back to some of those, you know, Stephon Diggs and, and Prince and some of the other guys that they've been in on. 
uh, ended up staying at Maryland really because of their relationship with Loxley and because of how good a recruiter he is. To me, if Loxley comes to Ohio State, then then you know this really becomes one of those those no brainer situations. I think for him to come over uh, and play for the Buckeyes. Otherwise, you know, I think I like their chances now that Loxley's not at Maryland. It's kind of wide open. You know, he took a he took an official visit to Florida at the end of November. So clearly, uh, you're looking at a kid that that's opening up his recruitment a little bit as we come down the stretch. So. I like their chances right now. Just overall, we'll see how the the visit goes. Hard to imagine it going anything but great, considering Urban Meyer and the success they've had there. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see. He'll be coming in with some other guys who are already in the program, and Joe Burrow and Torrance Gibson. If he if he ends up back at quarterback, and um, you know Stephen Collier, and obviously J T. Barrett, and uh, you know Cardale. We'll see what what happens with him. But interesting to see if he is scared off at all by that when he gets on campus and really starts to think about, you know, the next four years of his life. But uh, obviously there's a huge opportunity for him. Kid's a, a, an incredible passer. He would fit well into the system uh, that they run here. And I think if they end up with Loxley, then I think it's a no-brainer. But uh, otherwise, I, I like their chances, but I still like Maryland a little bit more uh, if, unless Ohio State ends up with Loxley. I'm sure we'll talk to you a couple times before the game, but I want to get your initial thoughts on Ohio State versus Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl, a uh, throwback to 10 years ago exactly. Uh, same two teams, same same bowl game. Uh, Buckeyes are favored by six and a half points, so looks like a good matchup for the Buckeyes B cast. One thing that I'm concerned about is, you know, guys looking at the NFL, guys being disappointed that they're not in the college football playoff. Or maybe even disappointed they're not in the Rose Bowl. And, um, you know, that being said, I feel like guys like Joey Bosa and Ezekiel Elliott, they're such competitors, they're going to want to go out on a, on a high note. Everybody wants to go on a high note, but I think everybody's different. You know, I look at what happened a couple years ago, I think a couple guys checked out. Uh, and then I think about five years ago, Cameron Hayward was a guy that, you know, I was there at the Sugar Bowl, the game that didn't count against Arkansas, and Ohio State's trainers were telling him not to go back in the game because his shoulder was so bad. He was a senior playing in his last game, getting ready for the NFL draft, and he was like, he had none of it. He wanted to go back in there and play, and he did. So everybody's different. I tend to think this team's going to be motivated by understanding the concern that maybe they won't be. Your thoughts on that? Your thoughts on just the matchup in general of Ohio State versus Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl? Yeah, I think it's a great matchup. You know, I, I mean, I know there's some fans who are disappointed about not going to the Rose Bowl, you know, having been out there to cover Ohio State against Oregon in the Rose Bowl. Nothing quite like it. You know, it's the granddaddy of them all. It's it's an incredible time, an incredible experience. But I think this is a fantastic matchup. Like you said, a rematch of 10 years ago. But, uh, you know, really, obviously, totally different programs, totally different situations and coaches. And, um, you know, but, but I think it's a fantastic matchup. If you go back and look at Notre Dame and what they've done this year, um, and so it's not like they've steamrolled a bunch of good teams, but um, their only two losses of the season were at Clemson by two and at Stanford by two. So to me, you are looking at one of the, the best teams in the country um, you know, throughout this season, and I think it's a great opportunity for Ohio State to prove itself, to prove that maybe it did belong in the, in the BCS, or excuse me, not BCS anymore, but in the college football uh, playoff. So to me, I think it'll be interesting to see. I think the biggest matchup is, is how they're going to slow down Will Fuller. Uh, the kid is a monster. He's, he has 1,100 yards and 13 touchdowns this season. Obviously, we're going to look at Eli Apple as the guy who's going to, going to draw covering him for most of the game. And, you know, you see a little Gary on Conley as well in there. But uh, he's a kid who, who is among the best receivers in the country, and nobody's been able to slow him down this season. He's averaging 20 yards a catch uh, this year. So the kid's having a monster season. That concerns me. Um, you know, I, I don't, I'm not worried about Chris Ash and, and his game prep, the fact that he's taken over a program. We saw what uh, Tom Herman was able to do last year. So that doesn't concern me, but it does concern me just in general that this kid is a burner, um, you know, a kid who's had, uh, I think, five or six or six. I think, I think he's had six 100-yard games uh, this season. He got three touchdowns at Pitt. So the kid's been a monster this year, coming off 136 yards and a touchdown against Stanford. So he's a guy to watch out for. And then you've got an, you know, an Ohio guy playing quarterback in Deshaun Kaiser that's had a tremendous season, kind of thrust into the mix, a la Cardell Jones and, and JT Barrett last year, um, and has done a great job for the injured Malik Zaire and other Ohio kids. So completing 63% of his passes, 19 touchdowns, nine picks. Uh, they're really balanced. They run the ball well. They've got two guys with over 700 yards rushing. So Ohio State defense better show up to play. You know, they better come and bring their A game because if they come into this thinking, you know, Notre Dame's not that good because they have two losses and they're not as good as the teams they would have played in the college football playoff, 
um, you know, they're going to they're gonna be a little bit surprised. This team can put points on the board in a hurry. Um, you know, they run the ball and pass the ball pretty well. They're, I think they're, they're one of the more balanced teams in the country. So, um, to me, it's a great matchup. I'm excited for the game. You know, I'm excited to see what Ohio State can do in a month. I feel like they never really found their stride this year until maybe the end of the year. So it'll be interesting to see what they can do with a month. Uh, JT Barrett kind of locked in and, you know, see if he can put together a, a monster performance against Notre Dame in, in the Fiesta Bowl. Fantastic insights out of Brandon Castell. Thank you very much, BCast. You can catch his column every week on Bucknuts Inside the Brain of BCast. Thank you very much to the listeners as well. I appreciate you guys tuning into the show. Take it away, best damn band in the land. <laughs>